In this video, I'm gonna show you how I airbrushed this artwork. Let's get into it right now. So this is the completed projection. I just used an HB pencil and I'm working on an A3 canvas. I'm going to be starting off with a pre-mixed flesh tone, so any flesh tone will do. I'm going to use this flesh tone to just colour in any of those bone areas. So obviously on the skull, as well as his hands. And I may also use this on the candlestick holders, just as a base colour. So you don't have to be as crucial with this tone. Just want to get it nice and even, but if you do end up getting it a little bit patchy, don't stress too much. This is a skull, so you can always bring more texture in to hide it. So it's definitely a good one to do if you're just starting out with the airbrush. A little bit more forgiving. You can see that when I'm up close to the edge, I'm bringing my airbrush in a bit closer, just so I can control some of that overspray. And the flesh tone at this stage may look a little bit too dark, as opposed to the reference. But once the darker tones come into it, It'll uh, blend in nicely. I'll even add a bit of that flesh tone to the eye sockets, so that way we don't have any of those white gaps. Bring some of it down here as well, on his neck. So even though he's a skeleton, you can see I've put some hair in, and his hands, so suggesting that there is some skin on there. It's not just bone, so just a little bit of fun. So if an area does go patchy, just work back over the top of it. So you let it dry off a little bit and then just come back in and try and focus more on that 50-50 overlap, which will then give you a nice flat tone. I will use this tone in the candlestick holders, it's close enough. So what I tend to do with my artwork is whatever tone I'm using to start with, I'll look through the artwork and if there's a similar tone, I'll use it as a base because I can always shade back over the top and add highlights and a bit of a glow. And the other thing is I'm not trying to 100% replicate this reference so if there's a few little tweaks here and there, I'm not too fussed about that. I want to put my own art style into it. Now, even though this section of the candlestick is hidden by the spider webs, just in case I don't cover them with as many spider webs, I want to make sure that I've got a bit of that bony colour in behind it and the same colour I'm going to use on this tabletop. So I want to mix up a base colour for the candles and the pumpkin. Let's start with some yellow, drop of pyrrole orange or two, pop some reducer in, give that a mix and see what that looks like. I actually think that's pretty good. So using that mix Going to go ahead and flat tone the candles. Now I'm also going to hit the pumpkin. 
So if you're getting value from this video, consider subscribing and tap on that bell notification so that you don't miss any other content. Now I'm going to use Pyrrole Orange just for some shading on the candles and the pumpkin. Just blending it up from the base, not going all the way up. And with this reference, this part here is a little bit blurrier. It's meant to be out of focus. Building up the shading on that pumpkin. Just gradually building it up. I'm not trying to saturate the surface. Now using some sepia brown, I'm going to start shading the entire artwork, starting with the eye sockets. Now this is where I'm going to bring my own little style into it and tweak it a little bit from the reference. Now you can see how dark sepia brown is. If you're not comfortable with using it, you could always use a mid brown first shade with that and then gradually go darker. where I'm going to start to use some templates to create some texture within the skull. So this is a texture effects template by Gerald Mendez. This is a dispersion template by Drew Blair from School of Realism. So moving the template around as I'm spraying. Just gives a nice little bit of pitting within the skull. You can also lift the stencil and move it around to create softer textures. And then I use this one as well, just to add a little bit of extra texture. While I've got it, I'll do a bit on the hand as well. To fast track your airbrushing, you can definitely check out our online airbrushing course at airbrushasylum.thinkific.com. This template has some sharp edges where I can pop that nose bone out a little bit.
pull out some of these teeth. Even these teeth in the back row here, I still render them in, even though I'm going to put a shadow over the top of them. Just gives it a more realistic appearance. using that template to pick out that defined part of the bone. Some shading within here, just to give that a bit of depth. Run that over the teeth. Pick up this edge of the bone using that stencil so I don't have an outline there. Not really happy with this section here. I think that needs to be a bit wider. It looks a bit skinny to me. So I'm just coming back in with that flesh tone because that'll opaque over the top. And I'm just gonna fix that up now. So if you don't like something, just don't be afraid to go back and grab that initial tone. It opaques well enough. and just redraw it in. And when I'm happy, I'll go back to the sepia and you won't notice it. Okay, I'm happy with that. Back to the sepia. And you can see how that's fixed. And by the time I'm done, you won't even notice it's there. Now I've got some hair in here. So I'm going to paint that in with the sepia, even though the hair is going to be white. This is just a base colour, so underpainting. Again, like I mentioned earlier, using the colour while you've got it. Some cracks in the skull as well.
lots of dark spaces in here so I can colour them in with the sepia as well. Being a little bit more careful now around those edges. So again with that neck I'm not doing bone. Now rendering this hand, keeping in mind that this is meant to be blurry. So I'm a bit further away to create that effect. So even if you happen to do a sharper line, you can always go back over it if you want it to be a bit blurrier, just feather it out. Okay, so I want to go in and similar to the jawbone, I want to fix this hand a little bit with that flesh tone before I move on. Now re-rendering with that sepia. Continuing on with the sepia, do this tabletop.
just gradually shading that pumpkin. This as well is slightly blurry. Building up some of these edges for the candles. I'm just going to run some freehand shading carefully with that sepia. What will happen is I'll pull the rest out with the highlights. Just need some harsher shading for the candlestick. See, I'm not too concerned about the overspray. I can easily fix that. And it's in a darker area. So as you can see, what I'm doing on one side, I'm repeating on the other. And now with some freehand, I'm going to come off those edges, darken around the edge as well. I'm going to use that sepia just to pull out this candlestick holder, this candle holder. Because this one's going to be behind the webbing, it's going to do it freehand. It's a bit more suggestive. Use the template to pick out this edge. Now, even though it's not in complete focus, I'm going to lift the template a little bit so I get a slightly softer but still sharp edge.
some shape to the base of the pumpkin. And run a bit of a drop shadow as well. I just pick out this little melted candle. Doesn't look like much, but the wicks will make these look a lot more like candles once I'm finished. So just using the template to pick out the edges of those candles to find them from the background. shading I'm just pulling out the shading of the jacket leaving the white highlights and this is obviously creating the creases within the jacket dusting over the white of the canvas. And shading all the obvious areas first. always a good way to start and then sort of build up your other shadows around that it's working from your reference brushing in the buttons, just chasing around the outside edge, then a bit of shading to shape it.
blending this out a little bit in the background. So I'll bring another darker colour in. I'm going to use some Payne's Grey just to block in the rest of this background. Use a shield just to get a more defined edge around the head of the skull. Being a bit more careful around the candles. Using white, I want to establish more of the background. Using my circle stencil and some white, I want to airbrush in some of these highlights. And they're not completely sharp, so lifting the stencil off the surface a little bit. coming back in with that pyrrole orange. It's going to brighten up some of these shades on the candles. Same on the pumpkin. Also going to shade over some of these highlights that I just did. Just to give them a quick tone. And now on the skull a bit of a glow. and even on the candlesticks. Some on the leather jacket as well. You can see how much this changes the artwork, just ties it all in. This is usually how I paint meaning I use limited amounts of tones and I just come in with different transparent colors. Even though this pyrrole orange isn't fully transparent, but I've over thinned it with the reducer. So it's doing a fairly good job. I also know that I'm coming back in with a darker tone and some white highlights, so that's why I'm not too concerned. If you're going to do this at the end, well then you'd want to use a specific transparent tone. 
meaning something like the Createx illustration colors because they won't opaque at all. We're just doing numerous coats just to build it up. Gets a bit of warmth into the artwork. So I'm going to use this white now to render the candles as well as the pumpkin. Nice and bright so I'm up really close. And you can see I'm only putting highlights in certain spots using my reference but also adding in some extras if I wish and tweaking them a little bit just if I think it needs a bit more. little bit of a glow coming off this one as well same here with this while I've got the white I'll put some highlights on the pumpkin again just looking at my reference and slowly building up those highlights. few highlights on the timber just on that tabletop Now adding some highlights to the hand and these fingers. So I know in the reference these are blurry, but at the moment I'm kind of liking it more with a bit of detail in there and having it a bit sharper. I can always go back to blurry if I wish, just by dusting over it at the end, the next tone.
but I'll see what it looks like once I've done these highlights. Now I'm going to airbrush in the hair. So I want the hair to be thin, so you need to do fine lines. Come back over at the end. I just want to put it in now, just so that I can see how the artwork looks. You can see I'm making multiple passes, just brightening up those strands. So don't try and get it all in one hit. It's the same as all the highlighting and even with the shading, I tend to build up my tones. Especially if you're running your paint thinner, this is something that you're gonna have to do So just bringing some highlights into the skull using the texture template again just to get some pitting in that skull as well. Being a little bit patchy is a good idea so you want that uneven texture. Just building up some nice bright white areas. On the teeth, just do a white highlight. And I'm doing a highlight above the tooth as well. picking one side of the tooth, so on the right hand side closest to where our light source is coming from. Now I'm going to bring some highlights in the leather of the jacket. On the buttons. Now I may need to go back over some of these. Once I darken the jacket, you can see that the white doesn't really like sitting on lighter areas. You need a bit more of a darker shade underneath it.
not too worried about any of that overspray. That'll get cleaned up with the darker tone. Once I sharpen everything up. Uneven spray here. Obviously tighter, brighter highlights on the buttons. I'm really just focusing on those highlights just to create some shape. Bit of stippling. Uneven spray just to build up a bit of texture as well in those highlights obviously come back in with the darker tone and do this as well but it's not going to hurt to add a bit of uneven highlighting in there as well and same process on the other jacket sleeve If you're having trouble identifying where the highlights and shadows are, what you can do is walk away from your artwork or step back from your artwork and squint your eyes and then hold the reference up while you do so. Or even just by squinting your eyes, you'll see all the shapes and shadows. Going back to that pyrrole orange, it's going to hit the edge of the glow. Just toning down some of these highlights. Dusting over the fingers again, which are closest to that light source. A little bit of that glow on the timber tabletop. So now I'm going to use some transparent black. This is already pre-mixed, so transparent base mixed with black and reducer. And I've also popped some blue in there, some indigo blue, just because I want more of that blue shift within the black. I want a colder black. Whereas if you put, say, a brown or something in your black, then it'll be more of a warmer black. And I like doing this because it just takes the edge off black. So now with this tone, I want to be nice and accurate. Start in this area here, which I would call the safe zone. You can see how that template will just pop that lower jaw out no problem and with that contrast that I'm getting from the transparent black it's just going to shape the artwork a bit more. So you can see I'm up nice and close colouring in, paint on paint off, keeping the air on at all times. 
just pulling back a little bit on the paint just to allow a little bit of paint to come out and then as I get further away from the edge because at this stage I'm still controlling my overspray that's when I can come further back from the surface and start to color it in and it's easier to color in less chance that you're going to get it patchy Now with the eye socket, don't color it in totally. So you can see I've got a sharp edge along the top and I've sort of run a bit of a sharp one on the outside where those cracks are. But then just do a graduated tone from the top down to the bottom so that that way you can still see into the socket and you've still retained some of that sepia that was in there from earlier. If you just color it in, in solid black, then you're gonna lose that sense of depth. Up nice and close for the teeth. Just a tiny little dagger stroke in between those teeth. Dust over the rear part of the teeth. Same thing with the nose socket. I don't like to color them in totally. Use a template for this to pop out that bone that separates the nose. A little bit of shading along here.
You want to avoid running a line right around the edge of the cranium. That's going to make it look a bit more cartoony. Going over the hair with this transparent black, now this is going to create a better base for the hair to sit upon. So when I go back in with the highlights, those highlights are going to stand up a lot better on this darker tone. Now working on the jacket. Again, wherever you see a sharp edge, that's where you need to be up really close. Again, a bit of stippling back into the area of uneven highlights. And you can layer back over the top as well, so if you're not happy, just keep tweaking it. Shading some of that lapel back. So that's the good thing about, if you leave it a bit brighter, you can always dust it back down, but it's very hard to go the other way around if you've gone too dark. drop shadow so I am going to keep this sharper I'm not going to do it out of focus like the reference has shown me just personal preference
So re-airbrushing in some of those veins now with that final detail transparent black. A little bit of shading on the candle, just very carefully on that bit of the glass. Shading the pumpkin. So you can see how much darker this transparent black is. Now a bit of shading in that candlestick. Now I'm not running these sharp shadows right along. Just want to pick up a bit of the edge so I don't want it to look too cartoony. So whenever you outline something completely then it's going to have more of a cartoony appearance. That's why using templates can be very handy. I just like to mix it with both templates and freehand. Just blending that out a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with the white, do some final highlights. So I'm going to brighten up some of the candle flame highlights.
Reese brighten some of the pumpkin ones too. Less is definitely more, so just take your time. I'm just up close for those candle flames and just um, putting a little bit of a highlight on the actual wick as well. But I'm leaving that glow around the wick. on that wax. I'm going to airbrush in some spider webs. So up nice and close. And taper off your stroke. Little fine lines. I don't like to be too even with webbing. Do some little hot spots in there as well. So having the white really bright as well as a little bit transparent will make it look more realistic. Join some up, this candle stick to the other. So just switching to the transparent black, it's gonna darken off some of the jacket. Some of these areas I think are a bit too bright. Same on the other sleeve. I feel some of those areas are a bit too bright. You could also bring another colour into the jacket if you wish. Now airbrushing in the hair you'll see how much better it sits upon this darker tone now.
remember the hair needs to be scraggly. So just thin strands. I'm getting a lot of tip drying here. I think my Eclipse Takumi needs a clean. Highlighting on the jacket and on the buttons. You can really notice how much better that white highlight sits now, so much more obvious. So I can get some nice bright white highlights on there in certain areas, not going to overdo it. And I'm also stippling a little bit just to pick up a bit of texture. That highlight's not going right around the button. So I'm only hitting the extreme white highlight. Adding a few white highlights to the teeth and certain sections of the skull. I don't want to go too much. And that's what happens when you don't shut the paint off, which I always tell you to do. So now I'm going to have to use that transparent black and just fix that. Could have edited this out, but I don't mind showing you that I also make mistakes. But nice and easy to fix. So now that's done, I can go back to my white and just going to add some highlights. Just some final ones on the fingers. I'm going to use this transparent black to tone down the hair a little bit. And also just to shape it a bit more. And if you go too heavy with this step, you can obviously grab your white again and re-highlight some of those strands. 